Hey, what's going on everybody? Jay Glees here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the new series Castlevania on Netflix. Now, the first half of this video, I'm gonna try to keep spoiler free, and the second half of the video, I'm gonna give you my take on the series and how it went down to the final episode. So growing up, Castlevania was one of my absolute favorite games, and I know many of you that are watching this video from my channel are probably thinking, dude, you play fighting games. Well, actually, I play a ton of retro games, I just don't necessarily post them on the channel. In fact, I have the fourth best time in the world in Castlevania 2. Many people don't know that, but I do. It's actually posted right here on the channel, and here is a picture of my placing. It was third, but it just got knocked down recently. So going into Castlevania on Netflix, I had very high expectations and I really wanted to make sure that the show captured the essence of Castlevania and I believe that it really does. The show is extremely dark. I think that's a great way to go about it. The game itself was always very dark and I enjoy this type of premise. I didn't want some type of quirky sunshine and rainbows type of Castlevania. I'm glad that this is brutal. I mean, you get to see monsters just ripping people to shreds. People's eyes get ripped out of their face. There's blood everywhere. The whole show is just absolutely brutal and I love that part about it. Another thing that I was really looking forward to finding out is if the voice acting was very good and it's excellent. Richard Armitage plays Trevor Belmont in the Castlevania series and he does a great job utilizing both sarcasm and fierce seriousness all mixed into one. But in my opinion, Graham McTavish absolutely steals the show as Dracula. Dracula is portrayed as this once conforming, do right by society vampire that gets turned by fuel, hate, and rage, and just really turns into the savage beast that we know as Dracula. And the way that they formulate that in the show is phenomenal. I think they did a great job with it. The combat and action scenes leave nothing left to be desired as they're just extremely brutal and action-packed. On both ends, from the heroes to the villainous monsters, the savagery is just out of control. And I'm not one to watch cartoon series. I don't watch any anime or anything like that. But this series definitely caught my attention and kept me entertained throughout every single episode. The one thing that I will say that's unfortunate is that there's only four episodes and they're about 25 minutes in length. The positive thing about it is that the series basically is moving in a positive direction and really starts to pick up on the last episode. So once we get some more episodes, some new episodes, I feel like the series is absolutely just going to skyrocket and take off. So now we're going to get into the section with spoilers and my thoughts on particular things in the series. So if you want to click off the video now or just pause it and come back later, after you watch the episodes, do that right now. So I love the fact that the series takes place during the events of Castlevania 3. I feel like the NES versions of Castlevania, Castlevania 3 was the best incarnation of the story and the gameplay also was amazing and there were more characters in that game than in any other Castlevania game from the retro game series. I was very excited to see them incorporate Sypha and the way that she utilizes her magic in the show is absolutely awesome. As soon as I saw her take that hood off, I immediately knew. I was like, oh man, that's gotta be Sypha. This has to be taking place during Castlevania 3. I knew it right away. What definitely caught me by surprise was that the sleeping warrior was Alucard. I didn't realize that moving forward. I thought that once they started talking about the sleeping warrior and Trevor kind of dismissed it, I thought that it really was something that was just fictitious, that they were just senselessly going through trying to find this, you know, messiah warrior that was going to save them, but there really was no one there. I think Trevor had something going there saying that the shrine was just filled with pure evil. I actually believe that into the series. They did a great job selling that as well. So it keeps you surprised all the way until the end of the series, I thought anyway. I like the way that they have different factions of groups inside of the story. So you have the church, which basically they're the most naive people of everyone in the series. They have no idea what's actually going on. And then you have the speakers that are literally just trying to help everyone. Then you have the Belmont family, which had tried to save everyone, but then they became exiled because of 
you know, thoughts of black magic from the uh, church and all of these other things that they thought they were doing witchcraft and, I don't know, some other convoluted things. They just had all of these negative ideas when the Belmonts were really just trying to save everyone from all of these demons. And then you have the demon faction. So the demons, basically Dracula and his army of minions that are going in and trying to kill all the humans because they took Dracula's wife and burned her at the stake. Now, Dracula was a very interesting character to me because he tried to conform and live the life of a human. And you never really get to see that side of Dracula in any of the games, as far as I know. I didn't play the newest versions of Castlevania, the two that are on the newest systems. I think it's around like 360, PS3, and PC. So I didn't play those, so I don't know exactly um, how they portray Dracula in those particular games, but I did play all the retro ones. You never get to see that human element, that kind side of Dracula in any of those games. And I think that that was a really good way to go about it. They developed him in a very short time, but it was very effective in developing his character and showing what he went through to make his wife happy, who he absolutely loved. She was the absolute epitome of love for him in the world, and once she was gone, Dracula was born. A Dracula that we all know and love. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. So as far as I'm concerned, the Castlevania series on Netflix is an absolute hit. I love it. I cannot wait for more episodes to be released, but I want to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Castlevania series if you watched all of the episodes or if you did watch the video all the way through or even stopped it halfway through, which you probably wouldn't be hearing this if you did. But leave a comment down below and let me know if you're going to plan on watching the Netflix series Castlevania. I definitely, definitely recommend it. So that's it. It's Jay Glee signing out. Thanks for checking in and continue to game strong.